The importance of neat pipe work, this is part two. Making the exhaust piping from the steam engine to the chimney using PM Research components. I'm starting the job at the cylinder end by fitting a small PM Research threaded pipe. These parts are very useful things to have in the workshop. This particular pipe is threaded 3 16 by 40 threads per inch. And luckily I have quite a few different size PM Research pipes. Selecting the correct piece of pipe for a specific job is important. A Stuart S50 steam engine is quite a small engine and it only has a 5 8 of an inch bore. The PM Research piping that is threaded 3 16 by 40 is going to be okay for this job. The internal bore of the piping is only just the right size to exhaust the engine efficiently. A steam engine is a gas engine. The white stuff that comes out of chimneys and exhaust pipes is not steam, it's water vapour. Real steam is an invisible gas and when it's superheated it's very nasty stuff. All of the piping needs to be of a sufficient diameter to be able to supply and exhaust enough steam without any bottlenecks occurring. This clip shows the cylinder block and the quarter by 40 union that are fitted to the steam chest. Really this size is a bit over scale, it's fine for holding the displacement lubricator but I don't want to use quarter by 40 threads per inch stuff for the exhaust piping. You can clearly see the physical difference in size between the one on the steam chest and the exhaust pipe which is the one sticking out of the top of the cylinder. It's all a matter of scale. The displacement lubricator is massively overscale. It's a functional device. It's not part of the appearance. But the exhaust piping can be much closer to scale. Here I'm fitting the second of the cast 90 degree elbows. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to make it so you can screw these elbows onto the end of the pipe all the way down and cover the threads. But on this one, if I did that, it wouldn't be in the right place. Rightly or wrongly, my friend Dennis, who's not really a steam enthusiast, assembled the engine and boiler on a piece of board in a position where there's no room at all for an exhaust condenser, so the exhaust pipe will have to go straight up the chimney. This is going to be a very simple steam plant. There's not even a hand pump to refill the boiler. It's going to be a little bit like a mammod. You fill the boiler, you run the engine, the boiler water drops, you turn the heat source off, refill the boiler, etc, etc, just using a funnel to replenish the water in the boiler. In common with a lot of other people watching this video, my friend Dennis will not be aware of what's going to happen when he first opens the steam tap to let the steam to the cold cylinder. The steam will condense immediately to quite a lot of water. There aren't any drain cocks fitted to the engine, so all the condensate will go up the exhaust pipe and up the chimney but then it will run down the chimney onto the baseboard and make a mess, or even put the fire out on the ceramic burner. And as the condensed steam also contains steam oil, the heat of the boiler is very likely to make a sound like fish frying in a fish and chip shop. All is not lost though, there's a simple way around this that I'll show later on in the video. I need to find a piece of PM Research piping that is long enough to go from the steam engine to directly underneath the hole in the boiler's end plate casting that supports the chimney. Here I've marked the position where I need to cut it. The length of this pipe needs to be a bit longer than you would think to accommodate the threads that I'm going to cut on it in the lathe. A very simple job, I put the piece of pipe in the chuck and use a tailstock die holder to thread a short length at the end, 3 16 by 40 threads per inch. Here I'm starting the fitting of the cast elbow using a pair of pliers, which is not very good practice. I normally use my Barco spanner. I only use the pliers to start off the job. I finish the tightening with my Barco spanner. And the piping from the engine lines up perfectly with the pipe down the centre of the chimney hole. The question is, short of using a pair of pliers on the tube inside the chimney, how am I going to tighten this piece of brass tube into the cast elbow below? The answer is very simple. I'm going to fit a nut on the top of the tube. And I'm going to use some of this stuff, Loctite 603 retainer, to make sure that the nut, once it's fitted, doesn't come loose if ever I want to unscrew the pipe from the cast elbow underneath. As usual, I applied far too much Loctite, but I was very careful to make sure none of it went down the hole in the middle of the tube. All I have to do now is tighten a 3 16 by 40 threads per inch union nut 
onto the end of the piece of pipe. Once again, I'm doing this using my barco spanner. Once this Loctite 603 is set, it will be very difficult to remove this nut without heating this pipe to quite a high temperature, a much higher temperature than the pipe will be subjected to in the centre of the chimney. You don't need a big blast up the chimney on a gas-fired boiler system, so this pipe also does that. Because it's nearer the top, there's less pull up the chimney, and it's not drawing too much air over the burner. The other reason for fitting this long pipe is so that my friend Dennis can put a piece of silicone rubber tubing on the end of it to drain the condensate when he first opens the steam tap. With the chimney in place, you don't even know it's there. You can clearly see the rest of the piping, and it looks quite neat to my eye. I haven't yet screwed the vertical pipe into the cast elbow, but it looks OK. The exhaust steam going up the chimney via this pipe is going to be at a much lower temperature to the main steam inlet pipe. And for that reason, the steam inlet pipe is going to run very close to the baseboard. I'll make the steam inlet piping and the adapter to fit it to the tap in the next episode. That's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.